Good. Uh, okay, so good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining our talk today. And as you can see, our special guest today, I don't really feel she needs any introduction, but I'm going to introduce her to you anyway. Uh, she is Naini Setalwad, a well-known nutritionist, wellness guru, food guru, and an obesity, lifestyle, and disease management coach, amongst a lot of many other things she has under her belt. Uh, very interestingly, uh, Naini has battled with weight loss, and at the age of 32, in 1996, she went down from literally 160 kilos, 160, to just 60 kilos. Wow. So that's a whopping weight loss of 100 kilos. I have really never heard of anything like that. Uh, so making her journey not only inspiring, but also very magnetic. Uh, today, with over 20 years experience, with the help of her clever food combinations, uh, she helps her clients combat obesity, diabetes, PCOD, improving immunity and degenerative disorders. And I think I will now let Naini take over. But before I do, uh, can I request all of you to please mute yourselves and also uh, to shut off the video because uh, that interferes with the bandwidth. So I would appreciate for this uh, during the talk, your videos and your audios. And of course, um, after the talk, which will last approximately half an hour, um, we will open up uh, the audio and video. And uh, for any questions that you all might have, Naini will be happy to answer them. We'll be recording this. So I think we already are. We are recording this. Um, just a little note if you all get logged off for any reason, please re click on that link that we have sent you. You know, the link that you have used to get on. You just have to re click on that and you will be in again. Everybody, everybody. So, you all can mute yourselves now. Or, uh, Naini, will you mute them? Or? Are we muting them? Yes, we are muting them. Okay, okay. Okay. So I hand over to you now. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, Times and Talents. I'm going to talk about my favorite topic, food. I love food. I think of food. I dream of food. But very, very important to me is the causes and effects of food on your body. I mean, this lockdown world has taught us so many things. And food has played a very, very crucial role. As a matter of fact, everybody has been thinking so much about food all the time. Let me tell you, you are what you eat. But with 20, 21 years of nearly experience in making people lose weight and gain health, reversing diseases. I need to tell you how to do this very easily. As I say, eat more, lose weight, gain health. It's not about cutting calories. So it's not, I would say it's not only about 20 years of experience, but I will go before that and I'll say a 20 more of me trying different diets different methods of losing weight, whether it was pill popping, whether it was health farms, whether it was hospitalization, luckily no surgeries. I mean, I was very, very lucky on that one. High protein, low fat, I did it all. Finally, I just knew one thing. I needed to lose this weight. I was 160 kilos and life was very, very difficult. I wanted it to do with my food, the food I like. I wanted to do it in my own home. 
I didn't want to go into any farm. I didn't want to pop pills. And I was very lucky. I met up with Dr. Durandar, who guided me through this. Once I lost weight, I worked with him. And then I, you know, did a course in Pyramid Medical Hospital. I have to th thank even Dr. Vijaya Venkat, who really contributed a lot to my learning. And of course, all the clients who taught me so much more. I mean, one of the things that I see that works very well with everybody who I encounter is please give them familiar food. The first thing I do, and I want you all to know, is you know, all of you all only think of your fat genes. My family is obese. That doesn't mean I have to be obese. I'm going to teach you all how to actually turn off your fat genes and switch on your thin genes. Everybody forgets they have thin genes. You know, it's very, very important to do that. My life was perfect. That was me as a child. I'm not tall, by the way. I'm under five feet. And everybody was fretting on how I was not putting on weight. I was so tiny. I was not growing tall. I mean, nobody realizes that the foundation of your food life, which actually can change the blueprint of your health, begins probably even before you were born. It's very interesting to know that smoke and nutrition are three things which affects three generations. Mother eats bad. The child doesn't get the perfect nutrition. I mean, nutrients. And then as the child doesn't have the perfect nutrients, the growth is affected, mental and physical and emotional. And then that passes on to her child. And please understand all of y'all that it's not only the woman's diet that it is important, it is also the man's. Don't we say that we've got the genetic code from the dad? Don't we sometimes say, oh, he has diabetic, diabetes, so I have chances. So it's the man and the woman's food that is very, very important. Please understand that. So what happened? To make me grow, as they say, they changed the food. And I slowly didn't grow in height. I just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm going to share with you a picture of mine, you know, which is this. This was by the time I was in maybe college or just after college, I'm not very sure. Stop taking the weight because I was so fed up with all the doctors and dietitians and health farms and Ayurvedi and homeopathy. I had a hip, I think, of about 76 inches. That I remember very well. Two measure tapes were used to measure me. There was no absolutely the weighing scales. I last remember at that time was 160 kilos when I started the weight loss journey. That's amazing. I remember one thing I always say that the world impossible spells as I am possible. So let's turn on your thin genes and switch off your fat genes. How are we going to do that? I've done it with so many people over the last 20 years and believe me, it's very, very simple. Actually, yeah, one of the biggest things that I do in my practice is complete privacy. I do not talk of the person unless they talk themselves. These are people who have talked. That's why I can tell you. And they're all age groups. Right now, one of my clients, and I've done even younger, is 11-year-old child. It's very, very interesting, you know, how we can change from fat to fit. And not only being fit, I mean, not only being thin, but the importance is to be fit. Remember that your diet is a bank account. Good food choices are your good investments. What do I mean by a bank account? You deposit money in a bank, you withdraw money, and you save money. Same way, every day you eat food, your body needs different minerals and vitamins. Like you need your iron, you need your calcium, you need potassium, magnesium. So it comes from the food you eat. And whatever extra, it's stored in the body for emergencies. Now today, I eat a junk food. I mean, just say I eat like a burger, okay? And well, the white bread has nothing that it can give you. 
there is no fiber in the food. How am I going to get my vitamin and nutrients? So I literally take it from my store. That's why we say bad food or junk food is a nutrient robber. So, you know, when you do good food, it is your investment. Cut off carbs. I mean, I'm sure you've all heard this. You've heard of high protein diets. You've heard of Atkins. You've heard of ketos. I mean, no. And first, you know, stop counting food as proteins, carbs, fats. I mean, this is crazy. You know, you need all foods from every food group to nourish you. And all food groups provide fiber. And fiber is so very important. And believe it, a lot of fiber comes from your carbohydrates. And this gives you an after meal burn. These are one of the things that actually turn on your thin genes. It's so important. What is the most important nutrient I ask people? Someone will say proteins and someone will say fats because of the ketos. I will say most probably people don't even remember this nutrient. And often we forget it. We don't have it. And we reach out for food and more food. It's water. All your food is transferred by water. All your nutrients are transferred by water. Your waste is transferred by water. It's the best pick me up. So nobody even remembers that. I always say begin the day with water. It's your most important nutrient. Many times it's not hunger, but it's thirst. As I say, I don't like talking about food groups, but I will. I believe that 50% of the food should come from carbohydrates. They actually recharge your body. They give you nutrients. They give you vitamins. They give you antioxidants. What are antioxidants? They are these little, little soldiers that protect your body from free radicals. Now, what is free radicals? Free radicals, in a very simple word, is even the byproduct of breathing. Now, I can't stop breathing. If I stop breathing, that's the end of life. But free radicals was provided to us by nature. It came from your yellow, red, green, orange color food. The more the food colors, the more your antioxidants, which actually hit on to your free radicals. And that's why I also prefer that your food should be 50% carbohydrates. The Japanese believe 25 colors of food every day. And that's very easily possible, especially in our Indian diets. Don't fear the grains. All grains are needed. The rice, the roti, the potato, the yams, the millets, all are good grains. We change according to seasons. They also provide you fiber. They give you satisfaction. So don't cut out your carbohydrates. Just choose them smart. Three quarters of your country and Southeast Asia live on rice. We have the most amazing variety of vegetables, the most amazing variety of grains and millets and rice, which no country in the world has. People say, oh, Mediterranean diet, fantastic. I said, why? Oh, they eat whole grains. I said, I don't think they eat as many whole grains as us. Oh, they eat vegetables. I said, the array of vegetables we have, nobody has. They eat spices. Oh, God, I'm going to talk about our spices later. Normally, they just eat a little of garlic and a little oregano here and there. We have so much. We have the best fruits. I mean, it's just wonderful how much we have, and that's what we need to look at. So 50% of your food carbohydrates, out of that, I would say 30% should be vegetables. They give you energy. They make you feel good. It's your B vitamin. It's so important. Fats. Yeah, it's very, very important. There was a time when there was a low-fat diet. I've done it. I've done it with my clients. Please do not cut out fats. Today morning itself, I told a client, 
hey, listen, I'm seeing your skin drying up and I know how much, you know, oil or fat you use in your cooking. And between two people, you need minimum of two kgs of any fat, whether it's ghee, whether it's cold pressed oil, it's oil, you need it. And maybe your nuts and, you know, coconuts, which you garnish is more. What do they help? One of the most important things what fat does, it helps you absorb your fat soluble vitamins. That's your vitamin A, which is a very powerful antioxidant. It looks after your hair, skin and eyes. It also helps you absorb calcium and also vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 looks after so many functions, including your thyroid, your diabetes, controls your body temperature, your bone health. I mean, so you need fats. I remember, you know, my grandmother saying, ghee nahi khase, to chamdi sukai jase. Your skin will go dry. Vitamin A. Ghee nahi khai, to bheju ke vite chalse. How will your brain work? 50% of the brain is made up of fats. Your Alzheimer's, your dementia, today is caused due to low vitamin D3. D3 cannot be absorbed by, without fat. Choose your fat well. Again, in India, we have so many to choose from. Cold press oils, coconut, cow's ghee. Please don't wait for the Western world to say, oh, coconut is great. Your A2 cow ghee, that's just your desi cow ka ghee. Come on. I'm not saying pour the fat like they do it in ketos. I say balance. It's all about balance. And that's what will give you satisfaction in food. It's so amazing. We have so much. We don't even need to go anywhere. Proteins. They help you function, repair your body. The most important function is repairing the body part. Excess protein damages the kidneys. Excess protein leaches the calcium from your body. Excess protein causes uric acid. And excess animal protein has no fiber. Of course, we want a protein. Everything we need. We need the roti, we need the rice, we need the vegetables. A lot of y'all are Parsi, so there's egg, there is meat, there is chicken. But there's also fish. I mean, that's the patra fish. That's your egg. I mean, everything needs to be balanced with your vegetables and it also needs the fat. You have the dals, which have a lot of fiber. Of course, compared to the egg and the fish, which practically has no fiber, your dals have fiber. So, you know, you need to eat, eat your egg. I'm not saying no, but can you make an omelet, a masala omelet? Can you eat a patra fish? Can you eat a fish curry? I'm going to go more into details. You know, on how a day-to-day -day food will go. GST is a must according to our government. I say GGT is must. Ginger, garlic, turmeric, your entire masala box, as a matter of fact. These are your thin gene activators. Yeah, they actually are functional food. They bring up the metabolic rate. They help you burn fat. They give taste to your food. So they satisfy your taste buds. Of course, we are born with a sweet tooth. And a lot of people just don't like sweet, but that's very, very rare. These spices which you put in actually help you control your taste buds. Whether it's sweets, whether it's savory, I mean, think of it, if you were supposed to eat food without spices, my God, just a boiled chicken? No. Boiled spinach or bland spinach, some vegetables? No. I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, and today, of course, all of you all are hearing the importance of your turmeric, the turmeric lattes. That's haldi bada dood. But one very, very important thing about spices, they must never be had without fat. So, you know, you have those bulletproof coffees there where they'll put some coconut milk or almond milk and they'll put some turmeric in the coffee. Why? Because they realize that the spice cannot be had 
without fat. It will burn your intestine. You didn't need to learn that. I mean, we never eat raw spice in India. We put ghee or we put oil. Then we put our spices or we temper it from top. Your mustard, your ginger, your garlic, your cinnamon, every spice in that beautiful masala box is a cannon full of medicines. Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. That's what Hippocrates said. And I am saying every food works for you brilliantly. It's a synergy of all these things together. And again, I'm saying we are born in a country which has it all in terms of food. Somebody there knew it very well. They knew which foods came in winter. They knew which foods come in summer. It's so amazing. You know, with the winter, you get your knee pains and your joint pains and you need more calcium, you need more fat. So you have the nuts, you have the seeds, you have the leafy greens. I mean, it's amazing. Your grain changes. You have the heating grains like the bajri, the makki. It's not meant to be had year round. To eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. And once you learn this, you won the battle. Battle of the bulge, battle of diseases, you can actually reverse and retard them. Food can change the blueprint of your life and your health. And it's amazing how I am learning every single day, every moment. And the more I learn, the more I want to learn. And the more I want to share. As I said, yes, we all have a sweet tooth. Why? Mother's milk is sweet. The first food normally which we eat is a fruit. So are we born with a sweet tooth? Yeah, mostly we are born with a sweet tooth. But this craving lessens with time. The first two decades, it's remaining a lot. But we have to understand that it's not sugar that we need. It's natural sugar from fruits or dry fruits. Sugar, white sugar, I would say is the next tobacco. It's poison. And white sugar actually multiplies your cancer cells. White sugar and even excess natural sugar. You know, jaggery, which you'll be very surprised, is just one step lower than white sugar. So we do not need it in excess. It causes hyperness, it causes anger, it causes agitation. So this is something very, very important that we need to learn. And you know, normally, Fruit in India was part of a meal. Sometimes people had it at breakfast. Sometimes people had it after dinner. It was not supposed to be the main meal. And it makes sense. Five tastes when you satisfy, you feel full. And that's what you need to understand. The same way all food groups you need the sweet, you need the salty, you need the bitter, you need the astringent, and you need the sour. So a typical plate in India would have a piece of lemon, would have little salt, would have a green chili, would have a pickle, would have a kajul chutney. Roti and rice often were served together. And you had, I mean, one after the other. And then you had your vegetables and you had your protein, which normally didn't come first. And even in a Western meal, if you look at it, that's exactly what it comes. You have the salad, you have the main course, you have a little potato, you have a grain, you have a side of vegetables, you can have a veggie soup. So balance of everything is the way to win every disease, to retard every disease, to reverse them also. There are certain foods which make you feel full. And what are those foods? Tomato, as a matter of fact, satisfies you. It has a chemical 
which actually brings about satisfaction. So many times you see it's part of your many cultures. Tomato is very integral part of a meal. It contains lycopene, that too, a very, very powerful antioxidant. I mean, so many people love their salsas and the tomato ketchups and the tomato gravies. Even the favorite soup around the world is a tomato soup. Now, coriander. We toss it in all our foods. It's such a powerful antioxidant. Now, your chutneys. Oh my God, it will make the meal just turn delicious. I mean, think of your chutney sandwich. And there's so many ways you can make even chutney with a food. You know, we have dry masalas, we have pickles in our country. They have natural probiotics, fermented food, again, part of our country and our food. People look for, you know, I'd gone to Japan and we were studying the importance of, you know, probiotics. And you, one of them, you know, they, they don't have milk and they have very little fermented food. They do have, but they don't eat it that much. We have our idlis, we have our dosas, we have curd. It's so much integral part of our diet and our pickles. So, you know, your chutneys, your podis, your pickles, you know, in Gujus, we have a methya masala. They all should be. Who doesn't have it? I think even in Parsis, they have, they have their atanus, or I'm not really sure what it's called, but it really, really is very important. A lot of people ask me, what should a daily diet be? So I'm going to simplify this for you. I mean, really, really easy. Your daily diet, of course, should begin with water. Why water? Because when you are at rest and your body wakes up, there is low blood pressure, there is low sugar. Your nutrients need to be carried to different parts of the body to make you feel fresher. And water is what does it. It assimilates the food, it digests the food, and it helps excrete the food. And as I said, water is the best, best pick-me-up. We have to look at how to increase, increase your fiber in each meal. And an Indian meal is a very balanced meal. It has a lot of fiber. We all forget the importance of fiber. And the biggest mistake that you do is to cut it off. Now let's look at breakfast. There are lots of different options for breakfast. Some people like only fruits. Well, that will give you a lot of fiber and instant sugar. But I would say not go overboard on it. You know, you can have water, you can have a fruit. And then after some time, you can have a kind of breakfast. What would be a breakfast? How will I increase fiber in the breakfast? So I've shown you a toast out here on the side, which has lots of chopped vegetables. You can use butter as a base. You can use a chutney with coconut or some nuts as a base. So you get your fat. You can do an egg, which could be a masala omelet. So all your masalas can come with the toast. You can do an akuri on toast. You can do a scrambled egg on toast. You could do an idli sambar. You get your fermented food. The sambar gives you the vegetables. I would not look into process, you know. I could even do an oats. But nowadays, I prefer to do like an oat sukma. Where I chop in a bit of vegetables. I may add in a bit of nuts to give me the crunch. I'm, I'm not very much into you know, ready to eat cereals. No, that's not. It's finally a highly processed food. Many times a snack in between could be a fruit, it could be nuts. Sometimes the evening snack especially. 
It's the witching hour for most people. Why is it so? When you get up in the morning, the body releases a chemical called serotonin. It automatically releases at sunrise. It's the chemical that makes you feel fresh and makes you feel happy. It gives you energy. At sunset, there is melatonin released. Melatonin is calming you down, slowing you down. Melatonin has very important roles of cleaning the liver. Sorry, I think we are disconnected. Are we on? Yeah. So that's your witching hour. And you really, really have to be careful what you eat at that time because you're ready to eat dinner. Most of us in India don't have an early dinner, but you need salt. So normally fruits may not satisfy you, but a fruit chart might satisfy you. But just a small little snack, as I call, will take you forward. It even could be just like an aloo chart. It could be a toast again or a bread again, you know, with cucumber, tomatoes, chutney. It could be salty nuts. If you've eaten well up to now, that means a balanced breakfast with all your, you know, your proteins, your fat and carbohydrates, all the food groups. And then again, a lunch which has enough fiber in it. You will feel satisfied. So let me go into what would lunch and dinner be? Why is it not good for? One moment. I'm just going to take you into the next slide. Look at the different choices. How do I increase my fiber? I can add a salad. I can add a soup. You know, so basic kachumbar, maybe a fancy salad, maybe a vegetable-based soup. Any veggies. Cook sabji, sauteed, grill, stir fry, veggie stew. Dals like, you know, dansak dal has lots of vegetables. It can be a palak dal, they can be a sambar. Even masoor can be cooked with, you know, onions, tomatoes, pumpkins, methi, and you won't even make out that all these vegetables are there. Your spices, which will add the flavor, which will add the healing properties. As you can see the picture in front of you, there are so many vegetables. I'm not telling you to stop your chicken or your fish, but you have to remember that it does not have any fiber. And without fiber, you will not feel satisfied. And when you do all these accompaniments, it takes you time to eat. 30 minutes from the stomach to the brain to say that I am full. So it's important. Of course, your Parsis love your Edu. So fair enough. Add Binda Par Edu wherever you want to add it. That is okay. You really don't know too much of vegetables, but you need to learn. As I said, your dansar tar can have a lot of vegetables. Your masoor can have a lot of vegetables. The curries, your prawn curries, your fish curries, they can have vegetables in it. You need to look and you need to borrow a bit from other cuisines. It's so, so important. So a meal needs to be balanced. Accompany it with a portion, as I said, lots of vegetables. Accompany it with a portion of rice or bread or potato mm -hmm. or a millet. And it's a win-win situation. That All is this will give you after meal burn. The spices will give you the meal burn. The, the fiber in the vegetables will give it to you. The fiber also in the grain, also in the dal. Once your taste buds are satisfied, you will not feel like binging. It's, it's a simple trick which actually turns on your thin genes. Seasonal food. 
I mean, why would I eat a watermelon right now? People all the time, can I eat watermelon? And I'm saying, no. I mean, you don't need to do that right now. What is it? It's oranges. It's papayas. I mean, eat the local food. It's so important. We have oranges, mosambis, papayas, chikus. The strawberries are going to come soon. I mean, they've started for fresh figs. I mean, we have it all. You have also the dry fruits, but you don't have to do excess of everything. If I'm going to have dates, I'm, I may not have my fruit. Because again, sugar is like a cigarette. You will constantly want more and more of it because any form of sugar actually triggers the same chemicals in the brain as does cocaine. And it causes as much harm. It's a drug. When you eat like this, you will feel more energetic. Your digestive system will work so much better. I mean, it is amazing what food combinations can do for you. It'll give you time to exercise. It'll make you wake up earlier feeling fresh. You know, when you follow the circadian rhythm, what is the circadian rhythm? You tend, circadian rhythm is trying to first eat at least four hours before midnight. Trying to sleep at least two hours before. Every hour of sleep before 12 is equal to two hours after 12, after midnight. What do I mean by that? That means if I sleep at 11, you know, I will get up automatically, you know, at about seven. But if I sleep by about 10.30, I may probably need another half an hour less. So following the circadian rhythm also helps the melatonin and the serotonin to be released at the right time, which aids in detoxifying or cleansing the body. It gives you energy. And today, everybody has forgotten that. In the lockdown world, though, they've been watching, I don't know what, on Netflix and some shows, and they're just hooked on. Messaging. I mean, a lot of people, you know, when I'm doing, you know, these kind of, talks with children, the first thing I ask them, do you want to have more time to play? And I, they say, of course. Do you want to look at a page and just remember it, have amazing memory, and you don't need to do your work again and again? And they say, of course. I said, the trick is the food you eat. The trick is the timings you sleep. I never followed any of this. I don't think I'd seen a, sun, a sunrise for so many years. Once I changed my food, all these things started coming back. And I see it with all my clients, the little ones to the older ones. And it gives us so much time. It gives us energy to exercise. Another caution about exercise, go about it slowly and gradually. Cardio is very, very important. Flexibility, which I think yoga can give you, but gradual. I mean, I was just talking to someone who's going through a lung problem, who's in hospital right now, and the doctor is saying, deep breathe, deep breathe, deep breathe. She's never done it. The lung doesn't have the capacity. And I've had people complaining, and I've just said, hey, let her just do three deep breaths. Every few days, we will increase it. We can do it twice a day. You can't be a master in one day. Slow and steady wins the race. I mean, an average weight loss or any change. I mean, I do an average weight loss of about two or three kilos. I know how to do more with a lot of people. How are you going to sustain it? Why do we look after health? What is it? Of course, vanity. I want to look good. Second, which is selfish, of course. Second is I don't want to fall in. Great. Third is I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Fourth is Jaisa Aha Vesa Vichar. That's very, very Eastern philosophy, especially in India. Your mindset improves with the food you eat. Have you heard of food psychiatry? Like banana is happiness in a peel because it's serotonin. Potato, 
has serotonin. It's a chemical which makes you feel good. That's what you need. Your B vitamins, which comes in the grains, they give you energy, they make you feel good. So food is a tool that makes you happy. These little changes make a difference to the quality of your life. Elevated mood, increase energy, enhance memory, and free time. That's the most important thing. Time to rest, time to relax. Food is the key to good health. That's what I strongly believe. Healthy food, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy nation. The future is so much brighter for all of us. I mean, food is a fundamental right. Good food is a fundamental right for everybody. And we need to eat good food. Have you ever wondered why junk food is so cheap and good food is expensive? What does a non-expensive food do to you? It causes diseases. And you will need more and more of, when you eat junk food, you will automatically eat much more. Why? Because the body is not being able to signal that I'm full. It's not getting all the nutrients. It's not getting all the vitamins. It's not getting the minerals. So you'll keep on eating and eating and eating. Your good food, you need less. You know, I always also tell people, sabjiya se sabjiya banao. Why? Don't we make vegetables from vegetables? No, I hear paneer ka vegetable, tofu vegetable, chana vegetable, moong vegetable. Last was macaroni ka vegetable, alu ka vegetables. These are not vegetables. Your bindi, your papri, your guwar, your leafy greens. These are all vegetables. Your cabbage, your cauliflower. Dangerous foods. You know, mother feels so proud because the child is eating noodles of noodles. And if he's eating roti dal sabji, he's passe. Oh, my children need rice. Are so, they eat what? salmon from somewhere and quinoa from Amazon. Have you understand? Do you understand what kind of preservatives it takes to preserve that food to come to us? Is it food which we are used to? Come on, eat local, eat seasonal, eat regional. That's what you need to do. As I say, healthy food, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy nation. Why is there so much PCOS? Why is there insulin resistance? I mean, what has shocked me in this two years? First, I remember 2000, when I asked Dr. Durandar about PCOS, he says, ah, that's a very small program, you know, problem. It's not so common in India. 10 years ago, or 10 years later, one in three women, um, child born with PCOS. What's happening? Insulin resistant. Two years, I've been seeing men with insulin resistance. And it's, it's crazy. The harm that we are doing to ourselves with this crazy, dangerous food. Nitrogen in food. <sighs> no, I don't need that. And you don't need that. What is common in criminals? Is it the children of criminals? Are they mentally not sound? Are they from economically poor backgrounds? No, it's junk food. As I said, go back to your bank balance. If I food, put in food which does not have nutrients, which doesn't have a balance of all the food groups, you're going to be in trouble. So most criminals, a study found was that they ate highly processed and junk So to achieve the best in life, you need food which is simple, what I will call sattvic food. Where 20 years, 25 years ago, I said, am I a sadhu that I'd eat sattvic food? Come on, I live life in a normal way. Yes, it's nothing but fresh food. It's seasonal food, cooked on a slow flame, amazingly well spiced, and that is food that heals you. So I would want you to go into local foods, seasonal foods, good foods, add in your vegetables, add in your grains,
take in your proteins, add in the good quality fat, garnish your food with coriander, remember to squeeze in lemon. The combination of all these foods is what is going to be the best thing for us. It's a win-win situation. 2008, Dr. Kalam. He awarded me to spread nutrition awareness in the country. What was Dr. Kalam's food? Simple. He was vegetarian. Economically, he couldn't afford non-vegetarian food. It was mostly rice sambar. It was very sattvic food. Simple. Now, didn't he achieve what did he not achieve in life? That is what good food can do to you. I once asked somebody about food of J.R.D. Tata. Very simple. He ate his fish. He ate his vegetables primarily. What didn't he achieve? So sattvic food doesn't mean what I said. I'm not a sadhu. I can't eat this rubbish. No. It's good food, local food, seasonal food. And that's what you need to all look at. Okay, mommy, keep my phone. Listen to her. Huh. The best gift today you can give to your family, your friends is fresh food, seasoned food, local food, organic food without chemicals. Why are these humongous sizes, PCOS, so many diseases coming across? You know the chemicals that are put into your food? You know, when I was young, the strawberries were this tiny. The grapes were so small with the seeds. By the way, you know, talking of grapes with seeds, Wine is good for us. It's the seed of the grape, which is the most powerful antioxidants. And today we have seedless grapes. Those chemicals and pesticides, which are made to make the fruit look so big or the animals so clumped up. I mean, is what is contributing to the humongous sizes, is causing the diseases to rise, is causing mental imbalance. Literally, you can change the destiny of your life by just changing the food that you eat.